The Godzilla Crestwood House book by Ian Thorne is one of the first books that many of us older G fans ever picked up. You may have heard from it from James over at Cinemassacre or from various videos and articles online. However, most of them focus on the inaccuracies of the book and forget how rare it was during this time to have any Godzilla merchandise at all, let alone anything informational. So for today, let's briefly examine the book, its author, and the state of Godzilla in the US in the late 70s and early 80s when the book was released. Growing up as a Godzilla fan in the early 1980s was pretty limited when looking at what we have available to us nowadays. My dad would watch Godzilla movies with me as a baby. As a matter of fact, it's one of my earliest memories. But by the time I was old enough to seek out the movies for myself, the Showa era had gone on hiatus. VHS or video cassettes were the movie tech of the time, and even during its heyday, finding Godzilla VHS tapes was really hit and miss. Only some of the films were even available at the time, and even worse, there was nothing out there to tell you if and when other films would come out. Heck, I remember having my mom drive me around to several different cities in the late 1980s because I heard a rumor that Destroy All Monsters was coming out on VHS. Could you imagine knowing that there was a Godzilla movie out there that had most of the monsters in it, a battle royale of sorts, and you couldn't find it? It sucked, and what sucked even more was that the rumor was fake and that the movie wouldn't even come out here in the States until 1998. And by then, I built up so much hype for the film that it was impossible for it to live up to my excitement. But I will say it was another G film, so in the end, I loved it anyway. To be honest, the best way to see Godzilla back then was by waiting for the weekend matinees that would play one, two, and sometimes even three Godzilla films on television. Toys and figures were pretty much non-existent at the time. There were the old Shogun Warriors Godzilla, and I had a few of those that my mom picked up from yard sales, but that was about it. The Imperial stuff wouldn't even come out until around the release of Godzilla 1985, which is why I was crazy excited to find Godzilla in the strangest of places at my elementary school. That's right, after one fateful day in the library, I came across a group of small black and white books with orange text. The Crestwood House series by Ian Thorne. There were books covering the universal monsters like Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, and the Wolfman. There was one on Bigfoot, UFOs, and even the Loch Ness Monster. But of all the books, there was one that I read so many times that it likely spent more time at my house than in that school's library, the Godzilla book. The Crestwood House series was written by Ian Thorne, and until recently I had no idea that the name was a pen name and that the real author was a woman named Julian May, an accomplished science fiction writer, who was best known for two different series, the Saga of Pliocene Exile and the Galactic Milieu series books. Looking at the Godzilla book, it would fascinate my young mind and would put me on track to be the fan that I am today. The pictures inside of it were simply amazing. Yeah, they were in black and white, and the films, all but the first two, were in color, but there weren't any books around on Godzilla at the time, so this was the first place that I saw such images. For one, it showed pics of Destroy All Monsters, starting off my search for that film. I just couldn't comprehend that they would put so many monsters in one movie. It had to be the best G film of all time. Just look at this picture here and tell me, if you hadn't seen it yet, that you wouldn't do anything to do so. On top of that, I hadn't seen Godzilla Raids again either, so seeing these images had me guessing about that movie as well. I did have the Smog Monster movie on VHS, but the picture of it in the book showed a creature that looked like the tallest monster to ever face off with Godzilla. But it would be the pictures of King Ghidorah, my favorite bad guy, that would burn into my subconscious. Just look at this image. Even though I'd seen the film in color, there was something about this black and white version. It just made Ghidorah look even more evil than it already was. And the way that the eyes look like white voids on its head was just amazing to me back then and still is today. Unfortunately though, the book with today's fans, if it's known at all, is known for its inaccuracies. The book would start off by saying that Godzilla was green and 400 feet tall, which is not really true, at least not entirely. It gave the wrong names for monsters, calling Angiris and Zilla, and calling Kumunga and Kamakuris 
Aspiga and Gamakera. It said Gigantus the fire monster was female, and it would help spread the rumor that there were two different endings to King Kong vs. Godzilla, with King Kong winning in the US release and Godzilla winning in the Japanese one. I have to say though, as someone who is old enough to remember the times when the book came out, these incorrect statements should not be taken so harshly. I've read reviews and seen videos on the book calling it a bunch of lies, and beyond its nostalgia that you should ignore the book. But these people are obviously too young to remember the state of Godzilla back then. Once again, there were little to no books out in the states at that time that listed stats and information for the big G. There was no G fan magazine, no internet, and no kaiju experts like what we have today. And even if there were, with no internet, you wouldn't know about them. So let's just take a look at these terrible fallacies once more in hindsight. She said Godzilla was green and 400 feet tall. Well, all the marketing materials of the time showed a green Godzilla, and the US release of the film did say that he was 400 feet tall. Anguirus is not Anzilla, but he's gone by some strange names like Anguilus, Angoris, and Anguilus. Kumunga is also known as Spiga, likely where a Spiga came from, and Gamakera was Kamakuris. These names weren't in the film's credits, so without any books of reference, she did her best at pronouncing the foreign names. Now there's no excuse for calling Gigantus a female, the movie even refers to Gigantus as a him, but even today people claim that Godzilla is a female incorrectly. And for the last big one, everyone back then heard the rumor about two endings for King Kong. I lived in several different states across the US as a kid, and in each one I lived in, the rumor persisted for decades until the internet came along. I also have to wonder just how serious the author really was in writing the books. After all, she was a famous writer of adult sci-fi, and this was a series of kids books about monsters. She did use a fake name, making me wonder if she didn't take the books too seriously and didn't want to associate them with her other work. This is just my own theory, and I don't blame her if this was the case, as again, kids book about a kids group of films. Either way, the books are timeless to me, and give me tons of nostalgia. I only have the Godzilla book today, I'd love to pick up the others, but they're getting a bit rare and expensive nowadays. Yet when I look at the book, it takes me back to being a kid and my early days with the big G. And to be honest, I don't remember any of the book's inaccuracies. There's tons of information on Godzilla out there nowadays, so I don't need it for that. Instead, I remember what it was like to see this stuff for the first time, and I'm glad that even today, when I see something new like the upcoming Godzilla Singular Point anime series, I still have that same feeling of excitement and wonder for the world of Godzilla. So what do you guys think about the book or the Crestwood House series? Are you old enough to have read it as a kid like me? Or are you lucky enough to be born when Godzilla stuff is all over the place? I'd love to hear your thoughts and questions down below. And as always guys, thanks for watching, take care, and I hope to see you next time.